names right if anybody's watching. Well, my name is Floyd Brassfield. Takes about 20, we've got about a 20 second delay from what happens, what actually is. Okay. Okay, one more time. Okay. My name is Floyd Brassfield. I live in Oklahoma City. And I'm Dr. Steve Sternloff. And, Doctor, would you spell your name, last name? The last name is S T E R N L O F. And, Mr. Brassfield, would you spell your first and last name? It's F L O Y D. B R A S S F I E L D. And you are a participant in the Small Steps program, okay. yes. And Dr. Sternloff, your title? I'm a psychologist here at the Harold Ham Diabetes Center. And Dr. Sternloff, would you start by just telling us a little bit about this program, um, what it is, how it works, and, and why it works? Well, we're excited to have this program here at the Harold Ham Diabetes Center. It's a weight loss diabetes prevention program. And it's not new, it's a proven program that has years of research behind it, several national studies that go behind it uh, to help people change their lifestyle habits. And in doing so, they reduce their risk of diabetes. Uh, the studies have shown that people that participate in this program lose 7 to 10 percent of their initial body weight and they greatly reduce their risk of diabetes up to 60 percent. So that's pretty remarkable. You know, is it, the name Small Steps, is it small modifications? Is, is that how this works? Is instead of trying, most of us jump into a lifestyle change plan and we try to make massive sweeping changes in everything we do. Um, talk to us a little bit about that, that name. The small Steps Big Changes came about because I think it's important people begin somewhere and find success with small changes. The Small Steps Big Changes program um, really takes into account that you've got to begin somewhere. It might be with uh, food, it might be with physical activity, um, but somewhere is an important place to start. Uh, the Small Steps Big Changes program is not a diet, so we're not putting people on a diet, we're not asking them to make changes across the board, but we are asking them to make some small steps in changing their lifestyle. When people change their lifestyle habits and when people make these small steps, they're lasting they tend to last longer than a diet would. So they're not doing anything that would make them rebound, and I think that's what we've seen with the success of some of our participants is that the changes that they've made, the weight loss that they've made, and the risk for diabetes has greatly reduced, but these changes are gonna last instead of lasting for a short period of time and then people rebounding and going back up in their weight. Could you give us an example of how that might be, what, what a small change might be, because I think what most of us think of is New Year's rolls around, we make our resolution, and it's usually this, this I'm going to get healthier sweeping overview, and, and with that in mind, I'm gonna exercise five days a week, I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. How would this program compare to kind of that massive, I'm gonna change my entire lifestyle? Um, give me an example of what a small change might be. Well, this program would work on one area at a time. Uh, uh, many diet plans or big programs that would focus on everything, as you said, people try to make New Year's resolutions and want to change everything, and they want to drastically reduce their weight. They've seen these weight loss shows, and they think they can suddenly lose 50 pounds overnight. And what happens is they become discouraged because it's too much for them. Uh, they're not losing weight fast enough or getting to the gym uh, every day of the week, which was their New Year's re resolution, isn't happening. And so when they're not getting to the gym, they quickly become discouraged and give up. That's why so many people that start a new plan on their own or start a weight loss program or a diet actually fail with that. Because those sweeping changes are so different from what you 
been accustomed to living, correct? If you're trying to change every aspect of Those sweeping changes are, are something that's foreign to most people. And in terms of putting it into their everyday life, it's extremely difficult. They're setting themselves up for failure and they've set unrealistic goals for themselves. And that's the beauty behind Small Steps Big Changes program at the Harold Ham Diabetes Center is that we have lifestyle coaches that work with each individual in setting small attainable goals so each participant finds success. Uh, Lloyd, could you talk to us a little bit about how you got involved in the program and then maybe how you were able to implement this into your life? Well, I got involved by my family doctor had referred me over because I was a, my family history was going to be a diabetic. Uh, to be exact, whenever I was in the program two weeks, my oldest sister was diagnosed with type two diabetes. My, my youngest sister uh, already had diabetes. My brother had diabetes. My mother had diabetes and that's pretty well why what, what killed her was that. So I knew I was a prime candidate for it and he did too. So it was, I was at a point trying to lose weight back and forth to where I was, it was either going to have surgery and do the drastic method or I was going to go one more, one more step. And I happened to be over here at the same time that they had started this program. And, and it was a, it, it became, it was a one-on-one -on -one type of a situation. So I had somebody to talk to. I had a doctor I could talk to, uh, explain why, you know, whatever I was thinking that might be causing these triggers that would cause these up and downs. I mean, I've, I've been lost all the weight, gained it all back, been through everything on that one. So this one is, is different in the sense that it was, uh, of course, you had this fear of diabetes coming in behind you that, that prompted a lot, but it was a different attitude. That, that the one-on-one -on -one was showing you how to look at food in different ways how to do it right, uh, combine it with some exercise. It, it's like I said, it's not really a diet. You can eat anything you want to, and I do. I haven't lost all the weight I wanted to. I made it to their goal, but my goal was to go past that, and, I, and I'm still in the process of doing that. But using those tools, it's easier for me to do it. Uh, to, uh, I, I know to read labels better, what to read on those labels. Uh, I know they're coming out with some uh, FDA or whoever it was was going to redo some of that language so it was easier to read. So, I, but now they taught me how to read those. So you do so actually read the labels. I re I do now. read the labels as to what I am, and then based on that, on what my limits that I can have from sugars and di you know the different diet items, then that will dictate what I do during the day and use it as a basis for that. So your small step was to become smarter about total sugar, total, I mean, what things do you watch? I, I, I watch the primary, the carbohydrates. Uh, that, that's real easy. I don't, I used to lecture my mother that, you know, that this turns into carbs and everything, and then I'd turn around and do the same thing. So it's, it, it, I really didn't know why. I mean, you know, I just heard all these things. So now I've watched the carbs and the calories and the fats all kind of combined together. And then in the process of doing that, as I lost my weight, I started feeling better. Uh, my, my breathing improved. Uh, I didn't get I was out of breath. Uh, I was exercising more than what I did before. So it kind of changed the whole aspect to it. And then, I, then the main thing, I think, to me, was then I started to feel better about myself. And, and you know, I was able to buy some new clothes, the smaller clothes, and, you know, donate the others to goodwill and these kind of these little steps that goes a long way. And, of course, the biggest thing is I have a very supporting wife that had been telling me this for years. I just didn't pay attention to her. I mean, we've been married 45 <laughs> years, and I figured after 45 years, maybe I should listen to what she's telling me. So it, it, for you, you, you've done the gamut, you said, of other weight loss programs, and, and this is not a weight loss program. This is really no. just kind of looking at... It's really a prevention program, trying to prevent diabetes, correct? It's correct. The closest I, I came to what this would be would be Weight Watchers, which I'm a lifetime member, uh, have been for a long time. I've had to pay for a long time because I never, you know, went way above my goal. But the, the diet, you know, Atkins plan, the carbohydrate diets, uh, you know, I've, I've got them all and, and I've gone up and down. And every time I would start to gain back, I would always gain back more. 
to the point this last time, it was the heaviest that I'd ever been in my life. You know, I, at one time I did lose down to 50 pounds. Now I've gained some of that back over the holidays that I'm paying for now. It's, I mean, I'm still paying it back. It's taken me three months. It was a fun two months, but now I'm paying it back. So, but I know how to pay it back. I know how to do it and what I did wrong. Next year I'll do something, I'll do it different. But I, but I learned now to control that aspect to it without sacrificing anything. Like I said, when I started, I, I can do, I can eat anything out there. I just know now I'm learning how to how to do it right. Is it, Doctor? Is it the deprivation some of what, why the other programs don't work? Because it's it's like we're saying you can't have, you can't have, you can't have, and, and I don't know if people are like me, but you tell me I can't have something, and even if I didn't want it before, I suddenly want it more. Is there something about that that plays into the psychology of all of this? Sure, I think that deprivation aspect has a part to do with uh, those other programs and the lack of success. Whereas, as Mr. Brassfield said, uh, this program taught him skills that he can use in everyday life. And so even after he's finished with the program, he can continue on. I, I also want to say, though, while this is a diabetes prevention program, the weight loss that occurs with this program has other benefits as well. We know that being overweight and obese are also risk factors for coronary heart disease, risk factors for certain forms of cancer, hypertension, uh, sleep apnea. So uh, the weight loss that occurs with this, yes, we're working to prevent diabetes from ever occurring, and diabetes is preventable in that respect. Uh, but it also has other benefits as well in reducing the risk of many other illnesses. Can you talk to me a little bit about the nuts and bolts of, of should someone like Mr. Brassville say, I'm in, I want to do this, what does the program, what does that mean when I sign up? What, what do I do? What am I committing to? We've started doing some tests to see if someone that's entering the program actually has diabetes or not. Uh, what we're looking at are people that are at risk for diabetes. And a staggering statistic is that one in three people with diabetes aren't aware that they have diabetes. So we need to determine before they enter the program if they actually have a diagnosis of diabetes or not, or if they're in that pre-diabetic phase. And uh, once we learn that they don't have diabetes and we don't need to refer them on to uh, medical care and diabetes education uh, for some survival skills and learning how to manage their diabetes, then they would enter this program, the Small Steps Big Changes program. And upon entering it, uh, it's a 16-week program that one of our lifestyle coaches would take them through. And there are booster sessions or there are additional uh, meetings that take place beyond those 16 weeks up to a year so we're working with someone every single week for the first four months and then uh, we're meeting with them periodically from that point on through the year so there's a tremendous amount of support there's a tremendous amount of guidance uh, goal setting that's realistic and achievable that takes place with this program regarding physical activity and making healthy cho choices for food Mr. Brassfield, you, when you signed on and, and decided you were going to do this, how, how were those meetings? How were those sessions? How helpful were they to you? Oh, they were the, they were the primary reason why I made it. I mean, like I said, I'd been to Weight Watchers before, and they'd been in group sessions and this kind of thing like that, and you had a lecturer. But the, the, my counselors are, were not lecturing me. They were there. They would, they would talk to me and say, okay, this is going to be what we're going to work on this time. Why are you doing this? Uh, when does this happen this kind of things and then I could tell them personally without worrying about anybody else in the room hearing me or anything I could talk to them and, and, and they knew uh, I could tell them things about why I did this or why I thought I did this and then they would make recommendations and they would set a new goal for the next week of okay let's try doing it this way and you know it, it, down to point one of the lessons was to going out to eat of getting a a menu before time and, and, and studying it and going in. Yeah, the other, I, one thing I learned on that was order first. Don't don't wait till you're the end, because you'll tend to hear all these good things. Go in there with what you're going to do, 
but if somebody, you know, if you're going to have grilled chicken and somebody else is going to have a chicken fried steak and they do it first, the odds are, in my case, I'm going to do the chicken fried steak, even though I went in thinking that. So they say order first. And, and it's, it's a little bitty thing, but, you know, it, it, it definitely helps. And so that's what they teach you or you start learning uh, of how to do it and, and motivation type thing. And then they kind of, if you, if you slip, on, which I did, and, you know, they're not, they don't condemn you. They say, okay, why did you slip? What happened on this? And you had to do a menu and you write it down. And they could go back and find out, okay, maybe I had too much peanut butter that week, which I was tended to do. Uh, you know, you, you, you learn these little habits as you go through, and so we, and that's what's going to help me in the future. Is that now that I know this is what causes these things, there's a cause and effect, and I'm in hopes that I'll continue to get skinny. Doctor, it's interesting because we think of eating as being nutritional, you know, we eat because we're hungry, but a lot of us eat not because we're hungry, but because of a stimulus. For some people it's stress, boredom, it, it can be so many different things that cause us to eat even if we're not hungry, correct? Sure, people eat because it's a social event that's happening. Uh, they eat because they're stressed or they're depressed uh, and or bored and so there are a number of factors that tie into that and I think this program helps people understand those factors what triggers there are and that's a individualized approach well while, while this program is standardized it's a manualized approach there's uh, a curriculum that exists that our lifestyle coaches take participants through the great thing about it is that it's individualized to some extent, that people recognize their own triggers, uh, their own issues that cause them to overeat uh, or not eat healthy or to not engage in enough physical activity. And then they can set some goals for themselves that are individualized. And as I said, those goals would be small achievable goals where they can find some success. Uh, Mr. Brassfield mentioned that he found some degree of success and that made him feel better about himself. That actually increased his motivation when he found that success and that's what this program is all about. So it's kind of the antithesis of what most of us experience with a, a weight loss program is we, we tend to fail within the first week because we try to do too much and then we get depressed and it's like, oh, well, I'm done, I can't do this. So this is almost the antithesis of that. Sure. Uh, and most people, whether it's uh, a diet that they place themselves on, weight loss program in which expectations are set too high or there are unrealistic goals in place and then they fail, I think this program with the small steps that are in place creates an atmosphere where people can find success and can find confidence and motivation, further motivation to continue their weight loss. I don't think so. I think it's offered it. at different times of the day and the week too, correct? So that it's convenient for people's busy schedules. The program is offered uh, throughout the week and we have uh, programs, uh, I think during different times of the day, there are programs that occur in groups. So a lot of people find that a group format is helpful to them. They find others that are going through the same struggles as they are and they learn from one another along the way, along with the information that they get from our lifestyle coaches. Mr. Brassfield, I have a question for you that was sent to me. You mentioned your sister being diagnosed. Has this program and your improvements helped your sister as well? Uh, yes, yeah, she's actually lost more weight than I have now uh, because of hers, but of course hers is in two type two. And, uh, and she's just been diagnosed, so that's the new lifestyle for her that's changing now, but she's doing okay uh, across the board as far as her health goes, is improving. My, I call her my younger sister. Actually, I'm the baby of the family, but it, it's my young sister. You know, she's had diabetes for several years, and so you know, it takes the, she's into the insulin and this sort of thing, so she's more the, that part. So Mel and my sister is just, you know, she just, doing just fine and like I said she's actually out doing me on weight loss and, and change your, your goal is that you'll never 
have the diabetes that she's had. That's my goal is I don't, I don't want to ever be diagnosed with that. I just had my annual last week and the blood test and he said, you are not diabetic. So it's that part there, I'm, I, you know, I hope to do that next year whenever I go back. So I think that's important that change with one person can create change in other people in a system. So in a family, if someone is making positive lifestyle changes, that can spark changes among other family members. Even among an organization or a business, that if people are making healthy choices and change, that that can create excitement and enthusiasm for others to change. So uh, starting out somewhere with one person, it can generalize to other people within a family or an organization or a business. Thank you. You're welcome.